holds his weight by an inliquid dam that is called a weight impingement, right? Now, uh, the next one which is a precipitation, okay, the first one which is a thermal precipitation. The thermal precipitation is based on the principle that our particles move towards the lower temperature region when subjected to a strong temperature gradient, right? The temperature gradient are normally of the order of 3000 degree per centimeter and the technique used to collect the particle size which is 0 0.01 micro micrometer with a high efficiency. In the electrostatic precipitation, uh, electrically charged to force a radioactive particulate to migrate out of, out the air stream onto a collection surface, right? So in this uh, uh, precipitator, two electrodes are used, like positive and the negative, same as the electro, uh, electri, uh, electrostatic precipitators, right? So when the air stream with the particulate will pass through the electrodes particles, pick up the negative charge and migrate towards the inner post of the precipitation. Precipitators were both discharged and deposited on the positive electrode, right? This is the same phenomena as the electrostatic precipitation. Now, the next one which is the adsorption sampling, it is for the gaseous pollutant. Okay, the gaseous pollutant are absorbed in a solvent when both the pollutant and absorber are in a close contact. Okay, here you can see that the absorber or the stripping column are there. Here you can see that the liquid which is in and the liquid will be the out. Here the clean gas will be the, sorry, gas will be the in and the clean, uh, clean gas will be the out. Okay. So the liquid react with the gaseous pollutant to form a non-gaseous pollutant, right? Uh, for example, alkaline for a acidic gases, then acidic solution for the alkaline gases and the oil for the hydrocarbons, right? So this is an absorption sampling. Now, the adsorption sampling, okay, the gaseous pollutant are adsorbed on the solid surface of the activated carbon and silica gel and the activated alumina on the molecular cell, okay? So here you can see that the active surface area increase the absorption, adsorption increases, okay. Here you can see that the carbon bed are there and here this is again carbon bed. The contaminated, uh, contaminated gas and here the steam generated, uh, the treated gas will be the out, okay. So here the first one which is the contaminated gas will be the inlet to the carbon bed and here after that the clean gas will be the out, okay. So the carbon bed here you can see that the dirty gas will be inlet at that. Okay, the steam for the regeneration, the steam will be the regenerate and the clean gas will be the out. Okay, so what do you mean by absorption and the adsorption? Here you can see that this is this process called adsorption and this process will be called the adsorption. Okay, now the third one which is the condensation sampling. Okay, the conversion of vapor or gas to the liquid means a condensation process, right? So the method used to collect the radioactive gases, hydrocarbons and the non-reactive vapors, okay? So the air pollutant can be trapped by the condensation reaction as the gaseous pollutant pass through the different temperature range of the condenser where the temperature is below the boiling point of the gaseous pollutant will trap in the liquid, okay? Here you can see that the gas will be the inlet. The gaseous pollutant which pass through the different temperature, particular temperature, right? And where the temperature which is below the boiling point, they are uh, trapped into the liquid and they are settled down, right? And the clean gas will be the gas outlet are there. And the water and the condensate will be the out are there, okay? Okay, now the control of the automobile exhaust. The first one which is, it is controlled by the unburnt hydrocarbon in automobile emission can be reduced by the use of the efficient engines, uh, right? Then catalytic converter can convert nitrogen to the nitrogen gas and reduce the potential hazard, okay, by enforcing the stringent uh, emission standard for the vehicle like a Bharat stage 4 or Euro 4, right, like the manufacturing stage then using a lead-free uh, lead petrol then using a cleaner fuel like a CNG, hybrid car, electric car and etc. Then by proper maintenance of the vehicle, uh, developing a good mass transportation facilities. Okay. Now, the last topic which is the analysis of the air pollutant. Okay. 
the first one which is the sulfur dioxide so the many method method which is available to determine the sulfur dioxide uh, okay here the which is the code which is given here is 3584.4.1 right approximately for the carbon dioxide 0 to 5 ppm permit the use of any of the following detection method like you go uv fluorescence fluorescence analyzer then flame proto photometric detector then electrochemical and most widely used method in this country is the uv fluorescence analyzer right so the uv fluorescence it is uh, is equal to the air sample draw into the scrubber chamber uh, and then on out in the irradiation chamber which is uh, where it is exposed to uv light and the so2 which is absorbed in the 190 to 30 nanometer right and the amount of fluorescent radiation is directly proportional to the concentration of the sulfur dioxide okay here you can see that the first of all uv light source are there right then beam uh, then medium splitter are there and the photo diode are there okay electronic signal processor there okay so here you can see that the proper measurement of sulfur dioxide by uv uh, fluorescence are given right now the second one which is the excites of the nitrogen it is determined using the chemical illuminations it is specific for the nitrogen uh, nitrogen oxide but total oxide of the nitrogen determined by passing the sample over a catalyst to convert a nitrogen to the nitrogen no2 to the n right suitable for the ambient air containing the oxides of the nitrogen at level less than 1 ml per mq right the reaction of the no with the ozone in a dark enclosed chamber to produce a light detected by a pmd it is provided if the ozone in present in excess the light output is directly proportional to the concentration of the nitrogen right so here you can see that the chemical reaction which is no plus o3 it gives a nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen right then this nitrogen dioxide will again a uh, chemical reaction and that is a here uh, nitrogen m plus e light okay here you can see that how it is measured okay so this is the whole process for the uh, oxides of the nitrogen now the next one which is ozone so it is determined either by the cumulusense method or direct reading uv detector uh, so it is a sample draw into the mixing chamber mixed with a steam a uh, stream or a stream of ethane it causes a cumulusan reaction and the subsequent emitted light at about 340 nanometer right sorry 430 nanometer so the direct reading of uv method is a stream of gas in a sample is stored through the flow cell uh, where it is uh, it irradiated with a uv light at a 250 nano 254 nanometer okay okay here you can see that the next one which is a carbon monoxide it is a non dispersive infrared device it is suitable for detection from the 0 to 500 ppm by the volume the sample through a flow cell in the instrument that is where it is irradiated with the infrared radiation right it is essentially just a modified dual beam infrared spectrophotometer right okay here you can see that the diagram of the uh, measurement of carbon dioxide by the ir photo the next one which is the non methane or hydrocarbon it is essential to discriminate uh, between the methane and other hydrocarbon as it is the only hydrocarbon that naturally occurs in a large amount in the atmosphere remember this cows or the uh, termites right to feed a continuous stream of a gas sample uh, into a gcb the fid right so the handheld field gas uh, chromatograph now available which allow the sampling and analysis to be done in the field which is eliminating sampling error right okay so this is all about the today's lecture i hope you all understood about the today's lecture thank you for the watching thank you